give it up for Andre. My name is Andre Shaira. Uh, I'm the uh, VP for Advanced Solutions Development. I basically run part of R&D at VM Turbo. I'm not sure if you've heard a bit about us. We've been uh, uh, in business for six, almost seven years now. Um, and and uh, I'm actually based out of New York. All of our R&D is in, in New York. Uh, so I'm visiting <laughs> uh, I'm London, uh, Amsterdam, obviously. Um, and it's fun to be here. Thank you for uh, uh, having me. Uh, I'll probably be somewhat brief, uh, brief and, and, and uh, you know, feel free to ask and interrupt uh, a bit. Um, so, um, the couple of uh, points that I want to make. Uh, uh, one is, is, is how do we see the industry in general, um, and, 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 and especially uh, as technology is evolving, how some problems are, are new and some problems are, are actually the same. Um, um, I've got a couple of generic sites about Kubernetes, which is probably boring to people, so I'll skip through them. Uh, I've got a brief demo, um, and hopefully we get to it, but feel free to ask me more questions afterwards. Um, so so in, in general, I think the uh, um, uh, reason everybody is here and everybody is in the uh, IT business is to run applications. Uh, and an application should perform. So the question is, you know, how do you deploy and run these applications and, and make users happy? Um, and and uh, the, the, the way most of the people uh, have been looking at this, at least uh, in, in our view, is that uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll deploy some applications, uh, we'll monitor them, we collect a bunch of data, we'll wait for them to break, and then we'll send an alert to someone, and then that person is going to be like, oh, I don't know what to do, let me think about this, and like, you know, everybody's shouting and they're trying to get it back up, and then they do something, it goes back into something like, you know, clean and healthy, and then you collect more data, and then you just go around this loop all the time, and your applications are all the time broken, and that's not good. Um, so, uh, this doesn't really assure the performance of the application, so if our goal in life is to do that, then this doesn't work. Um, and, 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 and the other thing is that this, this, this whole break fix loop is really difficult to do. You know, people are trying to root cause analyze this. At the end of the day, people are trying to root cause analyze things. And it doesn't work in software, it doesn't really work uh, by humans as well. Um, and, and we've got this uh, completely separate practice of a bunch of data being collected. And, and, and we've got really cool automation tools, and there's nothing in between. There's no, nothing connecting those two things. It's basically a human who has to figure out what's, what's in between. Um, so uh, we, 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 our, our, our belief, and it's a bit of a you know, VM Turbo, is that we have to get out of this loop, and, and, and we can't run our, our applications this way. Uh, we actually have to find a way of uh, how do we assure application performance, how do we utilize that infrastructure efficiently at the same time. And, and this is what we refer to as a desired state. How do we keep all of the applications running all the time, preventing these problems instead of constantly uh, uh, breaking things and fixing things? Um, so uh, now this is interesting because uh, as, as you look at how uh, the industry is changing, and this is nothing new really, uh, it's actually the same problem. It's the same problem from virtualization to, to uh, public clouds, to uh, containers, to either uh, containers as a service or, or PaaS. You're just doing it at different layers. And, and, and we think that uh, uh, regardless of where you are and where anybody is uh, uh, and, and what combination of these technologies and, and, and ways that you run your applications you, you, you use, uh, you have to solve the same problem, and, and in any case, you have to, I believe, get out of this uh, constant loop of break-fix. Um, and what's also very important is that regardless of what parts of these stacks you use and what stack you use and even what particular implementation of the, this you use, uh, there are multiple layers in your stack, from uh, you know, the, the you know, front-end load balancers to the applications to the containers to the pods to the clusters, the resources in a public or a private cloud, and, and uh, we believe that um, we need some system that can solve this problem for the whole stack, and not just for the bits and the pieces of the, uh, of the stack. Like, it's not just about we want to run an application and hope everybody, everybody else is doing their job. Um, uh, and, and, and this doesn't really change by, by running it in a private or a public cloud. It's the same problem. Um, in, in fact, uh, uh, you look at different options. Um, our goal is to be able to help anybody on any platform, be that you know, some private cloud, some public cloud, or a combination, uh, either um, uh, co 
uh, paid software or, 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 or open source software or whatever. Um, um, so, so we really want to enable everybody to be able to provide this control system that is constantly keeping the environment, uh, the applications healthy, and allows applications to run anywhere, uh, anytime, on any infrastructure, uh, on any application actually. Um, so, so we thought that this is a complex problem. How do, how do we solve this? So, so, so we thought that we're, we're going to um, find a common way of representing the whole stack, uh, everything from applications down, uh, as a marketplace, as a, as a supply chain um, of buyers and sellers, um, where um, every uh, entity in your data center, such as an application, is a buyer of resources, and every provider uh, of these resources is a seller of those resources, uh, such as a container or a, or a VM instance, um, and, and, and each provider prices its resources in the in, in, as, as a function of its utilization, and each consumer of the resources buys these resources, shops around for resources, finds the best way to, uh, to get its application resource demand satisfied, and at the same time each provider scales out or scales back to meet this demand. Um, so we basically build this um, analytic engine, this economic engine on top of this market abstraction, and what we get out of this is basically a real-time control system that is constantly matching application demand to infrastructure supply and scales the infrastructure across multiple layers of the stack. Um, and then you get you know, functions like you know, how do you manage your current workload, how do you plan for your future workload, how do you deploy, how do you run uh, across all the different uh, technologies that, that you uh, pull together from public-private cloud uh, technologies, which is basically what we view as our mediation layer. That's the ability to actually gather the information from the infrastructure, make decisions, and drive those control actions back, and, 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 and basically connect the monitoring with the, with the orchestration, connect the, the viewing with the doing. Um, and, and there's a bunch of things that we do this already before, and you know, 1300 plus customers are using it, so it's very exciting. I can talk about, about, about this. Um, and, and, and what's interesting is that uh, um, uh, Kubernetes specifically, but in general, open source creates a really interesting uh, opportunity because previously people thought that, well, you know, there's this closed piece of software, and I, I'm at the mercy of whoever manufactures the software and what ability I have to either monitor it or to control it, and let alone uh, connect those two things together. I think the cool thing about open source is that we have a lot more uh, uh, ability to, to actually do this, and, and, and in our view, not only to take uh, what's already instrumented and what's you have the ability to handle more workload, because we actually want to be able to handle you know, sudden peaks, so you're not completely running at the edge of your performance. So like being out for a few minutes is probably not going to kill the application. Being out for several days is probably not a good thing. Um, yeah? At what scale are people actually running the application? So, um, so, so we, see, we actually have uh, pretty nice size customers. Um, this, not necessarily Kubernetes, but in terms of our control platform, uh, we are running uh, all of Cisco's internal IT, that's about 50, 60,000 virtual machines, count the number of applications. Uh, all of HP's internal cloud, that's another 40,000 apps. All of Barclays' uh, server desktop infrastructure, that's a bigger number. Um, so, so, you know, decent size. I mean, I think it's important to be able to scale this. It actually only becomes interesting at scale. You could do this at a few nodes, but really, I think for our, my, my, my point is that uh, if you've got you know, a Kubernetes cluster of two nodes and four pods, you could probably manage this. Uh, 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 what I think is where this is going is, is as much as virtualization has grown, containerized application delivery, be that Kubernetes sort of pass on top of this, will scale much further, and you need a control system because humans can't do that. Um, Right, so my, my, my demo is actually pretty boring, uh, but because uh, uh, I, I, I didn't manage to generate any load, so really what I usually demonstrate is our ability to drive actions, and I literally just got here, so that didn't work very well. Anyway, the point is that what, what you now, <clears throat> what, what you are actually offering is a, a real-time control system that constantly aware of the application demand, 
and is constantly controlling how that demand should be matched to the infrastructure. So really, the best user interface is no user interface. Uh, in, fact, in fact, if you think about uh, an autopilot, uh, why do you have a pilot in, a, in an airplane? I mean, the best, uh, I think the best uh, scenario would be to uh, maybe not have a pilot, but you can't really do this. So, so what you do is basically put a pilot into the, 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 the cockpit, you put a dog next to it so that you know, the pilot doesn't touch the autopilot and the plane actually flies and then the pilot can feed the dog and everybody feels comfortable that there's a pilot there but actually autopilot runs the... So the so point is that you should have no user interface but obviously we're not quite there yet, neither in terms of the airline industry nor necessarily in terms of the IT infrastructure. So you do have a user interface. And, and, and um, um, in, in, in our user interface we actually represent the whole stack that you are managing from the user facing virtual applications uh, all the way down to applications, containers, virtual machines, public cloud zones, regions, uh, private cloud, virtual data centers, all the way down to actually data center power and cooling. Um, and, and you can navigate this, you can click on applications, you get a list of applications, in this case this is a Nginx uh, application that's running in a particular container for and I can navigate down to you know, the, the virtual machines, this happens to be one of our uh, 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 nodes in our Kubernetes cluster that happens to be running on an Amazon uh, compute node and of course uh, storing it uh, on an Amazon server. I can look at the, that particular zone and see all the other uh, VM instances that I'm running and I can drill back and into one of those other instances and as you see I'm, I'm navigating up and down this navigator and, and in each case I see you know how the resources are being utilized uh, and, and, and if there were actions that have not been executed yet, uh, as in controlling the infrastructure, they would show up here. Um, or another way to do this in a somewhat maybe more traditional way is to, to look at uh, how we are actually stitching together the whole stack and, 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 and actually able to match demand to supply at every layer. So here if I uh, pick this uh, Nginx application, it happens to be a service that is deployed in Kubernetes that runs on a handful of pods um, if I click on these pods, I can drill down to the, uh, happens to be a Red Hat node that, that's running this pod that happens to be uh, consuming resources, buying resources in our case from, that, um, fr from Amazon US East 1A. Um, and and uh, uh, by, by having this full stack and building a marketplace and driving uh, decisions in real time, uh, with the understanding of the application demand and with the understanding of the infrastructure availability, uh, you can truly assure the performance of the applications. Um, that's it. All right. Thank you. Created. But to embed this uh, control, so really what I want to talk about is how do you embed this, this control capability into uh, different layers of the stack and, and end, up, end up, of course, uh, preventing problems, showing the performance of the application uh, throughout all the functions, in this case Kubernetes provides, from deploying, uh, running and scaling your, your infrastructure. Uh, so I think why Kubernetes, this is probably pretty basic, everybody knows this. I mean, um, you know that you've got masters and uh, uh, <laughs> unless someone anyway. Uh, so, so you know what Kubernetes adds, I think, is a great orchestration and, and a fairly simple scheduler um, that basically makes initial decisions by uh, you know in two stages. Uh, it basically breaks down if you've got a particular pod that you want to deploy. Uh, it, it, it scans through the nodes and see if any of the nodes have enough or not enough resources and then after that it just basically makes a fairly simple decision of which one has more memory and then it ends up deploying the, 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 the particular pod there. Uh, the, um, the, the challenge is that uh, all of these resources have to be predefined in a pod spec. They are defined by humans. They have actually nothing to do with the real performance, the real resource demand, the real uh, SLA of the application. Um, they are only made uh, initially, and then you know what if you know a bunch of other people come on board and they want uh, more instances, they want more resources. Um, how, how do you scale this this, this whole stack? Um, so so really the question is when, what, and where do you deploy throughout your stack, your applications, your pods, your containers, and the underlying infrastructure that supports it. Um, 
and, 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 and how do you actually embed this in a, in, in a uh, system that uh, out of the box will assure the performance of the applications without relying on humans. Um, and, and, and basically drive actions on when do I stop or start another pod, uh, you know, how do I you know, scale this, how do I move them, because in real time the demand changes, the resource availability of the infrastructure can possibly change. Um, so we basically uh, use our marketplace abstraction and our economic engine to take, in this case, uh, you know, focusing on particularly the bits that are relevant to Kubernetes, um, and, and, and control it. And of course, we control all the other stuff underneath it, regardless of it runs Kubernetes or not. Um, and, and, and we do this by basically embedding another service in, in, uh, uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, it happens to be uh, running on the master, uh, completely open source, uh, and it talks to a SAS hosted instance of VM Turbo that is able to. Uh, communicated with this Kubi Turbo service, uh, get information in real time about what are the applications that are being deployed, what are the applications that are already running in your cluster, what is the available resources and how utilized those resources are in the cluster, and not only make decisions initially on where to deploy those pods, uh, but in, in constantly in real time uh, find that there is a you know, better place for one of those pods to run, depending on how long they run. Um, and actually drive these actions back, both initial deployment as well as ongoing scaling and the ongoing placement of those pods across uh, the cluster. Um, right. So it's basically providing real-time control uh, by, by making Kubernetes you know, smart enough to take advantage of such a capability, as well as, of course, the rest of the uh, infrastructure uh, around it or underneath it. Uh, without necessarily changing Kubernetes itself, just by inserting another service. Um, and, and, and the actions that you get out of this is basically the ability to deploy a pod, move a pod, and scale it based on demand. Not necessarily based on an alert, a threshold alert that something is already broken, but as we see increasing demand coming in through a proxy, uh, when do we need to add another instance? And where do we place that instance within the cluster? Uh, <coughs> And, and uh, just for a bit more detail, so as I mentioned, uh, we, we are actually enabling this by publishing our SDK. Um, in, in this case, we open sourced a uh, Golang SDK uh, that allows anybody else to do this uh, for any other piece of the infrastructure, leveraging um, an instance of our control system. Uh, we open source not only the SDK, but the Kubernetes service itself. Um, and, 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 and we not only manage Kubernetes, but we actually uh, plug it together with the rest of the infrastructure. So, so we manage this cluster in the, uh, in, uh, with the understanding of the underlying infrastructure, be that a Amazon public cloud or a OpenStack private cloud or whatever you might choose to, bare metal if you want to, uh, uh, run it on. Um, and, and of course, we dive these actions back into it. So uh, that was very quick. Uh, and. Uh, any, any, by the way, any, any questions? Any comments? Is this? Yes. Why not? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so with the, the marketplace, then do you have an agent that moves up to all the infrastructure? Uh, no, no, we actually. Um, so, so this is the interesting dilemma of how do you make it easy to deploy, but how do you make it also um, uh, uh, control? as much as, as, as necessary and possible within the infrastructure. So we, we actually dealt with a lot of cross-source technologies, and, 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 and in that case, we purely rely on uh, the public APIs uh, to both collect the information, make decisions, and in real time drive the control back into the infrastructure. Uh, really, I think one of my sites, I don't know if I kept it or deleted it, but, but uh, that there is a lot of talk about the software-defined data center, and, and what we really, offering and suggesting is a brain, is a software-defined control that takes advantage of those software-defined capabilities. So we actually don't use any agents. Um, um, and, and, and in the case of open source, what we've done in, in a bunch of cases is that we saw that there was a, a possible benefit of additional instrumentation, additional control functionality. We actually want to contribute that and make it part of the upstream and the downstream uh, uh, project, and then take advantage of that so that we don't have to deploy agents. Thank you.
So, but you, you mentioned there in your slides some some kind of agent. I'm, I'm right. confused. So, so, so this um, and that one, yes. Yeah. So, so the Kubernetes service is is a service that runs on the Kubernetes master. So it's basically one piece of software, one additional service that per cluster uh, that, that 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 we deploy. And and this is so this is the interesting question of. Are you at the mercy of what uh, someone can offer to you? Or in the case of open source, do you embed something into the distribution? Um, and we're actually thinking about this as, you know, we can have our own distribution that comes prepackaged with this service enabled. Of course, having the ability to take it and add it to your own uh, 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 Kubernetes deployment as well, or OpenShift deployment as well. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess to me that's embedded management different than an agent on every single application instance ah, that you're running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question, what, what metrics do you use to, to uh, decide on scale? So is, it, is it only in memory? That, or you only or also use the application performance? That, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, so, so I think that the, the ultimate goal is to assure the performance of the applications. And I think that uh, um, the way you scale, by the way you do everything else, should be done to, to meet a particular SLA, so to manage either the response time or the, the transaction performance of the application. Uh, and this is where we basically add more instrumentation to proxy, uh, QB proxy, HA proxy, uh, and take advantage of the instrumentation with the understanding of how the resources such as memory and CPU are being consumed, but not strictly saying, not saying actually that in fact, I don't think that you can make decision by simply saying that if my civilization hits 50%, then I must need another instance. Um, so, so I think it's really important to drive decisions top down from an SLA, from the application performance, rather than from the resource consumption. Um, otherwise, it's part of the short performance of the apps. So, is it possible to use performance of the application as a metric? Yeah, so, so, um, so the, the, uh, we actually haven't we haven't committed our, 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 our proxy enhancements, but that's exactly what we're doing is is, is to so you, you have the ability to feed custom SLA metrics into our software through our SDK or through our API, but we also wanted to enable it uh, uh, for any application, and the proxy was a good place to to, to grab those uh, things out of, and this is where we want to contribute that rather than. You know, installing an agent just to make it part of the the, the, the uh, infrastructure that, that provides us with the metrics and allows us to, to scale. Yeah. So, what, what happens to the application when your your SaaS service isn't working? It's disconnected. That, that, that's, it's also a good question. So, so one of the uh, goals of our software is instead of waiting for things to break and reacting to these problems, we want to prevent those things from happening. Uh, so we want to keep the environment in a healthy desired state where basically application performance is assured. So what happens if our SaaS breaks is that the application is going to continue to run. We're not in the data path, uh, is what I'm saying. Uh, but it's probably going to slowly degrade. So, so, so it's actually fine. I mean, it's obviously not desired to, 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 to shut down our, 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 our SaaS service. Um, or that could be, but it doesn't have to be SaaS, it could be your own private hosted, same, yeah, same, same, problem. same problem, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so your application performance is going to slowly degrade, and then once it comes back up, we'll, we'll start driving actions again to get you back and keep you in this healthy state. Um, so our goal is to keep it in a state where